Hello. This video describes how to set the Nashvik resource file in the BMC Server Automation Network shell. If you're familiar with Blade Logic, then you're familiar with this, the console. You've seen it all the time. You spend a lot of time here. But you may be thinking, I'm a script person. I came here to amplify that. And there's no problem with that. In fact, that's the fundamental piece of Blade Logic is the network shell, good old fashioned NSH. And today we're going to look at one of the things that we take for granted when we're inside of NSH. That's right, the prompt. And some of you may be coming from the Windows world and not as familiar, but don't worry. Just watch and you'll see. Do you notice how it's telling me military time and it's telling me what machine I'm on, then followed by a percentage sign? You may be wondering, how do I get that? Well, all of us in the Unix world are familiar with what are known as resource configuration files, RC files, or as they're mostly known, RICs. Here's an example for ours. It's a .nshrc file, which I'll be calling NashRIC. In fact, you can see in this example that we've got the NSHRC, or again, NashRIC file, saved in the basic, well, this is a 2003 machine, so documents and settings, but what would be users, and then the name of the user, the base of that file. So, simple enough place, and yes, this is Windows, so saving a file this way means you have to name it explicitly, usually from the command prompt. But it also means we will get this to load by default every time we run an SH. Now, let's take another quick look at this file, or in fact, let's take a look at a slightly nicer set of colors for the file. And you can see, as I would say, a lot of things here are aliases. Here's a really common one. It's just saying, if I type rock, I will get all of this BL cred stuff. You know, the kind you just barely memorize, but you don't want to. Well, now you don't have to. So when I come back over to the command prompt and I type, I wait a moment, I'll be prompted for my password, and then I can get right on to work. So what are the other advantages here? One that comes up the most for those of us from the Unix world, is being able to set what's called a PS1. It is the variable for what's contained in the prompt. Even though NSH is based on the Z shell, a permutation of the corn shell, the prompt parts are kind of a hybrid of what you type in Z shell and what you type in a bash shell. You can see here that there's capital T time in 24 hour, and then we get our result. There's the time, there's the path that we're in. It's more useful when we're looking at, say, some other machine. So if instead we go into, this is, happens to be the database server, but we now see that we are in that directory and we're right at the base of it. So that also means if we now change into a directory off of it, See, it's just giving us the last piece. And how's it doing that? Well, simple enough. Because we told it, just give me the very last edge, this percent sign one tilde. We can use the advantages that come not only with bash shell, but importantly, Z shell. Think of, for example, the ability to scroll up through the history file, which is always nice. But what's even nicer is having such features as not just tab completion, but the drop-down tabs, a feature only in Z shell, not available in Bash. Doesn't that make your work easier to be able to go, oh yeah, I meant Blade Logic, and now, ah, okay, and move on and have those things pop right back out. This is a great way to improve your productivity. You can see where you are and not have to repeat, but also, you can make it so you know how it works. If you're used to VI syntax, when you want to move through a file you've already written in the, in the prompt, no problem, it's ready. Again, for a lot of Windows people, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Think of this as an old school auto exec bat, but with power. In fact, it's so powerful it is just a script. Notice I even open it with a shebang line. That means I invoke NSH at the start of this thing. 
By exporting, it means if I create a shell that's a child process, it will carry all of that with it. I've got these pieces and I can use them. Enjoy.